Jehovah's Gardens. <laughs> Jehovah's Gardens is the hookup. It's definitely the place you want to be at. I just did a video on Six Flags Over Hades, which is Satan's version, and which leads down to the Hellfire Inn with eternal accommodations in the Lake of Fire. But Jehovah's Gardens, heaven, oh, that's the place right there. Bush Gardens, even more than Six Flags, is my favorite of all time music parks. You go in that place, they got lots of good restaurants there to eat. They have lots of cool rides to go on. They have a really cool wild animal park with all kinds of beautiful creatures to look at and to be able to check. You can even pet a lot of, a lot of the ones. You can be right in the middle of them and, and drive through there and see them, and it's really, really cool. Well, Jesus has Jehovah's Gardens. And Jehovah's Gardens is the exact opposite of Six Flags Over Hades. Jehovah's Gardens is just totally, totally beautiful. It's basically Jehovah's Gardens is heaven, praise the Lord. And when you get in Jehovah's Gardens, it's like, it's, you know, a billion times better than Bush Gardens, but it has a lot of the same stuff. You get in and people smile and greet you. And there's a lot of cool, of, a lot of cool things to see and a lot of cool, beautiful features. And there's going to be cool animals everywhere that you can look at and you can pet that you see and and uh, and walk around with and and just be part of it's just going to be so cool to be in Jehovah's Gardens <laughs> Jehovah's Gardens heaven because you know Bush Gardens has a lot of them they have Tampa they have Virginia and stuff it'll say like Bush Gardens Tampa Bush Gardens Virginia but it's Jehovah's Gardens heaven and when you get in there the first thing you see is you see the proprietor the person that greets you is Jesus Christ oh man you get to go in and fall at his feet and just worship him and just say man this is it, it, it's just been that's been our dream to be able to meet the Lord and Savior and he'll put his arms out and say welcome good and faithful servants enter into heaven that I prepared for you forever praise the Lord that's what I'm waiting to hear at Jehovah's Gardens heaven and then you'll be able to walk up and down the streets of gold and you'll be able to see and eat of the tree of life and the river of life that flows from the very throne of God. And you'll walk around and see all those beautiful animals and all the beautiful uh, trees and flowers and plants and just the, the beautiful mansion and, the, and the, the crowns that Jesus will have waiting for us. It's just going to be awesome. Jehovah's Gardens heaven is going to be beyond our wildest dreams. And there's no admissions charge. Like at Six Flags Over Hades, you got to pay a heavy price. Jesus Christ paid the price for Jehovah's Gardens heaven a long, long time ago. And as long as you have a boarding pass for the Heaven 47 on Christ Air, first class, one way to the New Jerusalem, choice of window or aisle seat, that same pass gets you in to Jehovah's Gardens heaven forever. Because Jesus paid, paid the price on the cross. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. It's going to be awesome. It's just going to be beyond our wildest dreams. The throne room of God with the 24 elders sitting around and the cherubim and just all of the majesty and the beauty. It's just going to be unbelievable. Getting to see lost loved ones and friends that were not lost, unsaved, of course, but that have died and gone on before us and get to hang out with them. And <coughs> the marriage supper of the Lamb, get to sit at the huge banquet table with Jesus and be able to do that for during the seven year tribulation instead of being stuck there, being at <laughs> Jehovah's Gardens heaven. And it's just going to be awesome. You know, it's going to be, and you know, we don't deserve, I don't deserve any rewards. You know, my, if I just to, to hear Jesus say, you know, welcome, good job, my good and faithful servant, enter into heaven that I prepared for you. That's enough for me. If he just gave me a little tiny shack and he gave me a stick with a nail, I could just pick up stuff off the ground. That'd be enough for me. But man, he's got rewards waiting for us and crowns and he's got a mansion <laughs> prepared for us. Praise the Lord, it's going to be awesome. And then we come back down with him after seven years and we help him during the millennial kingdom. He sits on his rightful throne in Jerusalem. King David's going to be there with him and all of the, the old school prophets and, and all of the New Testament saints and heroes, you know, and God will have us, Jesus will have us doing jobs. Some of us might be rulers, we might be teachers, we might be doing, because we have to teach the humans about Jesus Christ. It's going to be a perpetual, ongoing thing where they learn about Jesus for that whole thousand years, and it's 
going to be incredible to be able to be here on the earth and, and to work with the humans. And then after that thousand years when Satan is loose for that last time and so many are going to fall for his jive again and, and turn on the Lord, terrible. Then all those who made it through the millennium stuck by Jesus will have the glorified bodies. And then all those who were just stuck and never know Jesus Christ and are backslidden Christians, they'll all be resurrected up their bodies, stand before the great white throne judgment and be cast into the lake of fire. It's going to be terrible. But then after that, praise the Lord, the new Jerusalem is going to be here and the new earth and we're going to be starting off from, from, from day zero, starting off the, the world. It's like Adam and Eve started it, but we're doing it the right way this time and God's going to have it perfect with no sin, zero sin. It's going to be just perfection. That's what Jehovah's Gardens, heaven, is going to be all about. So if you've got a season pass right now to Six Flags over Hades, take that thing and tear it up and throw it in the garbage can. Just tell Satan, I've had enough of that. Rebuke him in the name of Jesus. Fall on your knees. Repent. Come back to Jesus Christ. Write your relationship with him. And then, and then, Jehovah's Gardens heaven will be your eternal, not a season pass, but eternal pass forever to live with your Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, friends, relatives, neighbors, all your new friends you're going to meet sights and sounds and and things that we've never even imagined to be there <laughs> praise the lord but right now my friends we have to understand as true christians that are ready for the rapture right now we're a minority we're an endangered species most of the church is extinct they're spiritually dead we're an endangered species we don't we don't only have to concentrate on trying to reach the unsaved we also have to try to, to reach the saved backslidden we not only have to try to reach the unsaved, you also have to try to reach the saved backslidden. The majority of the church is backslidden and turned on Jesus Christ and they refuse to repent because of all the lies. Once saved, always saved. And, and you know, just this cheap grace stuff, it just drives me crazy. We got to just keep telling the truth, though. We got to keep hammering home the message of Jesus Christ. You know, the remnant, those of us who are still here, just keep on pounding that message home and just pray that they'll change and tell them the truth. Rebuke them in the name. Just re re rebuke them. Correct them. Teach them. Just pray their hearts be convicted that Jesus can just convict them and bring them back on board. Turn their lives around and bring them back into the fold. Because Jesus Christ is going to break the skies any second of any day now, my friends. Only God knows the day and the hour. But God's given us a sermon. Those of us who are watching, waiting, excited, looking for him like the Bible says, we know we're in the season. I think we're in the end of the season. God just give me word, visions dreams i know we're waiting for god to give that word we have to get out right now let's just just keep on reaping the harvest this rotting in the field is so plentiful let's just keep on sharing the good news of jesus christ and let's try to reach those so we can all be in jehovah's garden heaven and not six flags over hades let's pray heavenly father i don't want to see anybody die and go to hell i know you don't man i know you don't jesus you died on the cross so no one would have to die and go to hell please wake us up Rebuke us, correct us, teach us, convict us. Don't give us any peace, happiness, joy, satisfaction, comfort, anything until we start caring enough that the lost are going to hell to just turn off the hell of vision, get off, out of our easy chairs, and just get out there and reap the harvest, share the good news of Jesus Christ. But if we're not right with you to fall on our knees, repent of our backslidden state and come back to you, restore our relationship to where we used to be. Help us, Jesus, to know that there's no time to play games. It's time to be serious and get real and get right with you. Bring us into the center of your will. In your precious name I ask it. Amen. As always, my friends, if you watch this video and don't know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, pray this prayer with me. Jesus, I know I've sinned. I've done bad things in my life, and I'm sorry. I believe you came to earth. I believe you died on the cross for my sins. I believe you were resurrected on the third day. I believe you went back to heaven to the right-hand side of the Father. And since that time, you've been preparing a place in heaven forever for all Christians. Please forgive me of my sins. Cleanse my heart. Come live in my heart. Make me a new creature in Christ, a child of the King. In your precious name I ask it. Amen. And my friend, Jesus says in the Bible, in his own words, that all who come to me and ask shall be saved. If I can pray with you to be saved, send me an inbox, a private message, call me if you'd like. I'd love to pray with you. If you have a friend, neighbor, loved one, co-worker who does not know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, if you're sick, you have a sick friend, family member, neighbor, co-worker, a sick pet, you need a job, car, home, food, clothing, water, whatever your needs, if you want someone to pray with you that has faith, Send me an inbox or private message. I prayed for and God gave me the gift of faith. Nothing of my own. He gave it to me. And I have mustard seed faith now like the Bible talks about. When I pray, I pray believing in my heart 100%. Speak with my mouth 100%. I know 
God will answer all my prayers as long as I pray in His holy will. He's proven to me over and over and over again. I can't remember all the times He's performed miracles through His humble slaves, faith and prayer and belief, never through me, all through the Holy Spirit. He'll do the same for you, my friends. Test Him. His word never returns empty. I know how busy life is, so thanks for watching this video. Please, share the link to my channel or this video or other videos that you like with family members, friends, neighbors, co-workers, with strangers. Drop it in a blog, a post somewhere online. Plant the seed, walk away, let God water it, let it grow. People need to hear the good news of Jesus Christ preached the way the Bible was written. Pastors are afraid to do it anymore. They don't want to hurt feelings. They don't want to lose money. They lose people on their roles. I don't care about that. The Holy Spirit brought me here to preach the Holy Bible the way it was written, period. He gives me every word of every sermon, every title, everything. It's all for His glory. I accept no praise. I reflect it back to my Master. But they have to hear the good news to come back to Him, to be saved in the first place, to be get off the sidelines and reap the harvest to have miracles happen in their lives. Let's do it. I love you guys. I pray for you every day. And may God bless each and every one of you. Good night.